Um, Scorch Earth no longer adds direct attrition, however, but instead reduces supply limits and increases fort defensiveness. Which, uh, basically, direct attrition is no longer applied to any uh, army that is sieging. However, uh, supply limits are lowered uh, very uh, in, in generally. So, basically, the modifier is saying, hey, this is Scorch Earth. You will let me add a certain percentage to the land limits that we can have in this province. Instead, what we're going to do is... Um, the amount of supply that is possible in this province is now going to be lowered. So basically what happens there is the, there's no longer an X percentage added on top of that. It's uh, basically uh, part of a certain piece of math that is applied there to see how much attrition is being added to there. Reduce Scorch Earth tax penalty to, uh, to minus 50% from minus 75. So all around buffs for Scorch Earth in general. Northwest. Yes, of course it's the northwest, not the northeast, because that would be in Korea. Anyway, uh, what else have we done? Nomad events uh, for okay. So nomad events for being at peace too long will now only have fi will now only fire if the country wasn't at war in the last five years, rather than if they have no active truce. So basically, you need to be uh, need to have been at war for a certain amount of time. We're really rushing through these uh, patch notes here. Um, ah, yes, here we go. Dutch, Rep Dutch Republic is no longer plus 33% force limit, but instead plus 10 heavy ship power. We already discussed this. This is an important one as well. We really need to talk about this, guys. Fixed grammar in power projection tooltip. Because reasons. But yeah, um, Scorch Earth has been... Uh, completely overhauled and some people on the forums aren't going to particularly like this because uh, Scorch Earth was one of the strategies that was being used for Byzantium uh, quite a lot and we'll see how this is going to impact so guys don't really don't don't flip your shit just yet we're going to go and uh, f f we're going to go and launch the patch first or the expansion first and then we can discuss on what um, what sort of impact that has. I'm sure that we've overlooked something and some sort of hilarious exploit will pop up somewhere down the line. Uh, a next pause. Apparently, uh, Pet Frog is getting an X, which is exactly that. And... Pet Frog is out. That's right. Pet Frog just got completely annexed, and uh, that will be the end of uh, his tally or his run through this game. And we started out with 32 players uh, at the start of the session, and now we only have about 16 left. A little bit less, actually. And, uh, yeah, we've uh, gone through quite a lot of nations. Of course, Brandenburg is not here today, as neither is uh, the, uh, the Mughals, uh, as well as is Ming here. Yes, he is. Uh, Aragon's not here either. Ottomans is not here. Hansa is not here. Brandenburg is not here at the moment. They're all on vacation. They got uh, they sadly had other things to do. I went on vacation a, w a week early for some reason. So uh, that's one thing that happened there as well. But Bavaria, it has fallen. It has fallen under the mighty, the mighty, mighty fist of the Austrians. And they will no longer stand strong. And they will no longer dance with their lederhosen, with their silly little hats, drinking wine in their pooch holes or is it pooch hole? yes no no i'm not even sure but making references to the 20th 20th century events is always a little bit dodgy anyway um fixed weird looking succulent straight yes there we go so let's take a look at the straights actually because there's been quite a lot of modifiers as you can see here, indonesia for a lot of players is very annoying because uh this particular area of the game uh, forces you to have quite a lot of transports floating around mainly because all of these islands are initially not really connected so basically what we've done is we added a bunch of straight connectors for instance uh, right here uh, Blambanga Blambangan is now uh, connected to uh, Bali Lombok for instance so that is a connector right here uh, another thing that has been added is in the archipelago of um, the Philippines, where uh, several small connectors have been added, like this one right here in the Gulf of Lete. So Visyas and uh, Manila are now connected as well, so you can easily 
move between those. And is there another one here? Yes, there is. This one is now to uh, this one right here. So uh, controlling the Philippines has now become significantly easier, not needing all of those uh, all those transport ships floating about. So there is uh, quite a lot of uh, yeah, quite a lot of changes there. At least in dynamic, when playing as say Borneo or uh, Ache or something along those lines, or even Japan in this particular case, because moving troops around has become so much easier. Poland is at war with the Mughals, which is uh, probably a war started by the Mughals. No, it is actually the second Polish conquest of Constantinople. Well, the Ottomans are out, and uh, it looks like uh, yeah, this war is definitely for Constantinople, and uh, the settlement is in fact called Istanbul, because that's only the business of the Turks. And something that we want to keep in mind, because uh, this conquest is going to be very critical, because Constantinople is an exceptionally valuable base tax area. It has plus 15, and changing the culture around will be very, very useful as well. Plus, it has uh, is an important center of trade. Plus, it's a sound toll. So this right here has just become one of the most valuable nodes in the game, especially with that plus 20 uh, local trade power up from uh, plus 10, as well as this uh, straight, but that was always the case. So. It has now become uh, very, very important. However, uh, who is El who else is joining the Polish in this war? Well, it's already over, as uh, that was actually quite quick. How did that end so quickly? I'm still waiting for uh, Brandenburg to take East Prussia. I doubt it's going to happen. As, uh, well, another uh, pause. It's getting a little bit annoying. Brandenburg was in the war against Poland for a second. The thing about that was, however, is that uh, Brandenburg is in fact being played by the AI this game. And this is probably a good illustration of the rival system. So if we look at the nations here, Brandenburg is rivaled with Russia, the Netherlands and Poland. So the AI actually uses the rival system very, very well. And it tries to attack those nations very early on. So Russia is here and Poland is here. And Brandenburg is a protected nation this session, which means that um, Poland or Russia are not allowed to attack it. However, considering Brandenburg is being played by the AI and Landfrieda has been uh, lifted, it means that they are free to attack whoever the hell they want which causes all sorts of problems. And right now they have a truce with the Hansa, with Aragon, with Corsica and Poland. Now, I would not be surprised if Brandenburg will at some point try to invade Poland once again. And uh, in the meantime, it is now 1767. We're almost there. It is almost done. Um, on May the 7th, 1768. In about a year's time, it is going to happen, and we will see our very, very first canal in the game. Very, very, very exciting stuff. But yes. However, looking at this game, Karsten has over 500 ships. Most of those are... I'm quickly going to need to look here, actually, at his navy. Uh, let's take a look here at military. Uh, the largest navy in the world, easily the Dutch. They've got, <laughs> they pretty much outclassed the number two, which is Spain, by almost twice the amount of ships, more than twice the ships even. Most of those are, uh, are light ships, 310 light ships. He's got more light ships than anybody has force limit, as well as 114 heavy ships. And with the additional power of the uh, new modifiers that come in with the nations here, uh, especially the Dutch Republic, which allow plus 10 heavy combat ship ability, makes them arguably one of the strongest fleets in the game, not even so much by sheer power of ships. Uh, sheer numbers of ships, but, sh but sheer power as well. And looking at ideas, naval ideas. Did he get quality ideas? Yes, he did, because that means that he will get uh, additional power of those oak forests uh, for ships, which is another 10%. That is super, super strong. My god, that is incredibly strong. Looking at his army tradition as well. Discipline 112. I would not be surprised if Brandenburg will try to go to war with the Polish once again because they have the armies for it. And here you go, here's a new interface as well. We completely overhauled this interface. I'm going to discuss that later on. What is actually in that interface. 
It is almost the date. The date is almost here. And the real question is that people are asking in the chat, is the United States still doing nothing? And the answer to that is yes. The United States is continuing being completely and utterly useless. And so there they are, the mighty noble republic of the United States of America. Sadly enough, because uh, the way the, the uh, our update system works, they are, have, they are stuck with colonial ideas. They will never, ever get American ideas in this session. Maybe next session, who knows? Who knows what will be coming soon? And oh my god, it's that pretty new TI over here. New Terra Incognita. Ooh, what's this? What did I just see? No, it's just East Sahara. For a second there, I thought that would be New Wasteland, but it's the East Sahara. How can one forget? And the year of 1768 has come. Spain has crashed. Okay, that that is a shame. But uh, Spain crashes all the time. So that is a shame, but uh, nothing we can do about that at this point in time. It doesn't look like we're going to rehost. Ooh, Brandenburg. No war still. So let's take a look. It's not going to It's not going to be very long anymore at this point. Uh, it is coming. Dumiat is coming. Unless it gets sieged down. Oh, that'd be really bad, actually. Because if these uh, Egyptian patriots manage to take control of Dumiat, this could be very... This could be bad. This could be really, really bad, to say the least. Because, uh, yeah, that would kind of stop the building of said canal. Because now the date has been extended, mainly because those rebels are actually in the province. This is really annoying for us as well. Can somebody please crush these damn rebels so we can actually, you know, see this canal being finished? Because now the date has been extending. No canal for you at the moment. <laughs> as a stack of rebels moves in. Uh, can somebody please uh, take out these rebels? Uh, hold on, let me let me check let me check to the, uh, talk to the team. Uh, Karsten. Rebels, doom yacht, kill. Perfect. All right, so uh, yeah, I called in the cavalry guys. This should be this should be done very quickly. Um, the HRE should be standing just firm because uh, yeah, doom yacht's currently being taken. We would have had our canal by now. Damn it, God. And uh, I would say it in uh, the in-game chat. However, I can't because uh, Observer can't chat to uh, any of the players, which uh, is a little bit annoying sometimes. All right, uh, it looks like we have a stack coming in. All right, is, 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 are the troops here? Come on, come on, kill these damn rebels. <laughs> it's a minus 21, oh no. Well, it looks like it's gonna be 70, 70, 70, 69 at this rate. And Corsica has been annexed now by Aragon. Aragon's not here. As uh, Aragon has been playing around, uh, he's actually not here. That means Corsica is now out. Such a shame. And uh, that means that we have yet again another player less in the game. Minus 21%. Come on. All right. So there's some error. Uh, it looks like they've left. Good. It looks like they've been uh, killed. And the 2nd of January, 1769 is going to be the date. So two more months or three more months. That was Egyptian nationalist. Oh, poor Nuzia. Nuzia is actually coming out here as Venetians. And uh, he's got uh, trade ideas, plut uh, plutocratic ideas, economic, naval expansion quality and administrative is currently running a uh, merchant republic which is pretty standard of course is venetian coming out here as a reformed has a fervor system not really using uh, his uh, fervor points like unlike the netherlands should be really be using those normandy is gone the netherlands have uh, taken normandy as well december is here this is why we hope the game doesn't crash Has it happened? All right. So have we actually added the graphics for the canal? 
That's what I'm wondering. It doesn't look like... Oh, there we go. No. Yes. Oh, come on. They haven't had the graphics yet. Damn it. So, um, yeah. So there's the canal. You just can't see it yet. <laughs> uh, okay, that's, that's ever so slightly on the awkward side of things. So uh, there is a canal. You just can't see it. You're gonna have to come in. You're gonna have to come back next week in order to see the glory. That is the canal. Um, so uh, yeah, that is uh, ever so slightly on the awkward side of things. Uh -huh. Once again, beta will be beta. We can't. There's. The, you can't see the canal, but I can guarantee you there is one. Anyway, uh, can I actually look at the? Um, is there any province values I can look at? I, this is all brand new to me, by the way. I have no idea whether or not uh, there's. Whether or not there's any modifiers here. But let's see if they can move a ship through it. There it is. It's a polar bear. Yes. 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 There is the canal. It's a really big polar bear as well. So uh, yeah, this is a this is an illustration of why um, graphics are not done yet, and uh, we actually have placeholder graphics. Yeah, yeah, no, these are placeholder graphics, of course. They'll be added soon. As uh, yeah, there it is. The polar bear has here. <laughs> This is the best thing ever. So the canal is here. There it is. It is a slightly oversized polar bear. And I hope that the Venetians decide to move um, their ships through said polar bear somewhere in time as well. Maybe this is not, by the way, guys, this is not new. This is not something, we, we're not going to have random polar bears roaming the landscape, crushing cities and nations. Oh, there it goes. No, there it is. Going left, right, and center. Because I want to see, come on, come on, Van Venice. Send your ship through the canal. I want to see it. I want to see it with my own eyes. I don't want to see it through this helmet. Come on. But yeah, as you can see, this game is not ready for release <laughs> yet. Mainly because of this. And uh, this, I'm not going to lie, this is the most glorious thing I've ever seen in my entire life. That probably kind of illustrates how boring my life is. However, um, the polar bears are here. They are real. And, uh, yeah, it, the real, dude, are they going to move, like, the, the ships on the back of the polar bear, possibly? Maybe. Maybe. I'm just going to wait here until somebody moves a ship through the canal. I really hope somebody does. Uh, uh, no, that's just going to dock in Gaza, I think. Did that dock in Gaza? No, it, w it went through, didn't it? It looks like it actually went through. Again, there's no there's no graphics for it yet. Oh, and Oman just went through as well. Yes, yes. There it is. The canals are here, and they work. They just look like polar bears. Swiftly moving on, as uh, the game is afoot. I know, guys. We're not gonna do a polar bear, su polar bear sunset invasion. That'd be that'd be silly. Jan Mayen isn't even in the game, seriously. Although there's this over here, so some argument can be made that Jan Mayen may be in the game, but that would be uh, Don's department, and he's too busy working on other projects, namely Hearts Iron Four. Um, so let's go take a look here, actually, uh, specifically uh, about the AI. So the HRE nations will no longer desire to conquer other Holy Roman Empire nations when Lundfrida is enacted. So basically, things like rivalry and all that will be completely disabled if Lundfrida is active, because you won't be able to conquer them anyway. So this is an, H, uh, this is an AI feature. HRE nations can no longer fabricate claims on other HRE nations when Lundfrida is enacted. As you can see, we've kind of done a lot of stuff with Lundfrida because it caused a significant amount of exploitation between our uh, players, considering Lundfrida was active for about the four or five sessions. And uh, when people don't go, can go to the war because of a simple thing that's enacted, they will find ways to go to the war. 
which is exactly what happened. HRE nations can no longer rival other HRE nations when Landfrieda is enacted. HRE nations can no longer join coalitions against other HRE nations when Landfrieda is enacted. There were a lot of loopholes. They now have all been uh, fixed. So let's take a look here at uh, Venice. Somebody in the chat is actually asking about whether or not um, he is uh, getting any uh, money out of this canal. And no, honestly, they should. I'm not seeing any at the moment. Uh, there's spoils of war, which is not really anywhere. Uh, there is taxation. There's not much taxation going on there. Not much production. Not much trade. Uh, we did this. Oh, yes. Yeah. So Austria is asking for fleet basing rights so they can actually move through as well. No, but the thing is, is that we did discuss a whole bunch of stuff regarding canals and what sort of impact they would have on trade. Whether or not the owner of the canal would, say, get like a, a sound toll or something like that. And it is still under discussion. And uh, there's still a lot of um, uh, tweaks to be made there regarding, um, regarding what canals actually do from a trade point of view aside from moving your ships back and forth meanwhile ming is at war with the power of shan Sean down here, not going to last very long. And I was actually one of our other uh, new employees called Roger, who was playing a Sean for a very long time. Sadly enough, he's no longer in this game either, and uh, he has been uh, firmly attacked by the Ming themselves, and it will be probably an next very soon. The Mughals aren't here, actually. I'm quickly, really curious about who they've managed to... Uh, uh, to rival. They've rivaled with Ming and Russia, and they've kept one slot open. They're currently being run by the AI. Russia has uh, rivaled themselves with the Ottomans, the Mughals, and Bohemia. Poland, in the meantime, are rivaled with um, the Ottomans, the Mughals, and the Netherlands. Brandenburg, same story there. Uh, with Russia, Poland, and the Netherlands as well. And considering uh, Brandenburg is being run by the AI, causes all sorts of problems for a player-run Poland. They could technically even be overrun, mainly because Brandenburg's armies are so incredibly good, it is not even funny. So let's take a look here at the uh, trade map mode, shall we? Uh, considering Alexandria is here, which uh, includes the canal, and of course the trade is of course coming in. However, one of the things that been, uh, has been added to the game are these uh, inland trade nodes, which uh, allow for much more powerful trading. Uh, some nations will have ideas that are specifically catered to this particular system. Uh, basically ideas that boost uh, trade power specifically on inland trade nodes rather than trade nodes that are out at sea, allowing you to uh, control areas much easier or at least move your trade along uh, land nodes, so like silk trade or something along those lines. But the thing is um, that there we're, different, we're differentiating between the uh, naval nations like the merchant republics and uh, the British Empire and they have a lot of overseas areas uh, compared to the inland nations that are that still need trade however they can't there's no way how that they can compete with the uh, nations that are already focusing on trade at sea so we boosted them in the uh, inland uh, trade uh, category which allowed for a lot more flexibility oh god it's so glorious look at that isn't that amazing? That's that's like a super low poly <laughs> polar bear. <laughs> In the meantime, though, there's actually a lot more stuff like that on the map. For instance, there's this uh, crocodile over here. And the pyramids have been added, and like a whole bunch of cool stuff has been added. To, uh, is in the game, especially in this map mode. And my personal favorite, if you can quickly move over here, there is a moose. There's a moose over here in Stockholm because we like moose for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that is, but uh, mooses are a thing. Oh, look, there's a windmill in the Netherlands. That is amazing. But the war is still here. 
Poland is exceptionally strong. However, Brandenburg is... Uh, I'm going to need to take a look here at Brandenburg's... Uh, considering it's run by the AI. It wants to conquer Silesia. Um, that may be a problem. Because uh, Silesia, last time we checked, is still firmly in control of uh, Bohemia. However, the AI will try to move towards that and try to take over as much uh, territory as they possibly can. So Bohemia may be in a bit of a pickle. And let's take a look here at Bohemia's... Uh, uh, let's take a look here at Bohemia's uh, setup. Um, they've got 100... They've got 6.1 land morale, which is pretty good. Army tradition is pretty good. Military tactics 3.0. Discipline of 112. However, if we look at the Brandenburgians, their uh, discipline is at 125, which is beyond ridiculous. But like a look at their ideas as well. Economic, naval, defensive, offensive, quality, administrative, and innovative. And they're going to be able to do a lot more uh, soon, uh, very, very soon. Which is uh, going to be, well, this Brandenburg is one of the more powerful ones that I have seen. And uh, according to the person that is playing as Brandenburg, he wants to form Germany before the end of the game. Which is, um, yeah, exciting stuff. Somebody actually mentions that uh, Mount Fuji is in the game. And uh, yes, it is. There it is. The holy mountain himself, itself, where thousands and thousands of smiths has walked up to uh, stick their swords, their katanas made out of pig iron, into the uh, into the snows and then walk down again to fold it a little bit more, because you know pig iron swords are a great uh, great thing to do. As a Prussian idea is, they have been nerfed. Have they been nerfed? Actually, that's a good question. Let's take a look at their ideas. What they still have open? They still have uh, aristocracy open. They can get a little bit more of. Uh, their quality, uh, the quantity ideas are still open as well, so we can get a little bit more out of that. And something else that has been changed around is that uh, now expansion ideas are part of the administrative tree, whereas espionage are now part of the diplomatic tree. So those two have been moved around slightly. Still can't believe this. <laughs> I actually have no idea where the polar bear is normally on the map. Oh, we've got ourselves a little bit of a war. Whissington is at war with Brandenburg. Brandenburg has uh, Brandenburgian conquests of uh, Niederlautsitz has uh, begun, and Brandenburg is now at war. A full-scale war is developing here, and uh, let's take a look at the stack. Whether or not the Brandenburg is going to defend against this assault from the Bohemians. The Bohemians are a bit of a pickle. Can they actually get the uh, rules done properly? They're at a massive disadvantage. It looks like the Bohemians are going to win. This is going to be close. It's going to be very, very close. Twenty-four thousand. Yeah, there's no way Brandenburg's going to win this. Come on, Brandenburg. If you win this. Not as much. All right, so Brandenburg only has 24,000 troops coming out of that, and they're barely, barely losing out on that one with uh, a stack that was significantly uh, smaller than uh, what they, uh, what, you, what you'd expect. And where are they retreating back to? To back to Gdansk or Danzig, depending on your interpretation of uh, how that should be pr uh, pronounced. However, there's not a stack of 52,000 troops, but a decent general moving in, and he has got himself a 5-3-3, and that's very, very good. However, he's losing prestige quite rapidly. He's at 87. It was 100% before, and he is uh, going to war with his rival, and he needs to do something about it. He needs to do something very, very quickly. Also, if he gets, uh, there's another thing that's been added. If he gets more than 50, percent, 50 power projection, proje uh, projection, he will get plus one for every monarch in every monarch born category. So this, this stack of 52,000 uh, Brandenburgians could ruin some serious shit. Oh my god, there's like 100,000 Brandenburgians rolling around. Are they going to attack any of these stacks? Another 28,000 here. This could be very, very close because the Imperial Civil War is on its... This music is so, so not totally, totally not applicable. But the war is on its way. Ooh, a stack of 100,000 Bra Bra Brandenburgians potentially ready to go in. This could be very, very dangerous. And it's in the winter as well, which means a lot of attrition is uh, actually being kicked in. Uh, yeah, there it is. So it's in the middle of winter. The Austrians are moving in, and there is a stack of 112,000 Brandenburgians ready to rock and roll. 